Hi there, welcome back to IndyCar on this the 14th of July, last day of the week. Uh, there's been a couple of interesting developments in the last 24 hours, and I think probably the most obvious one to talk about is the SNP's latest announcement of a brand new agency whose task it will be uh, to make sure that Scotland's universities, industries, uh, startups, all the rest of it, the links between um, education, higher education, innovation, um, and industries are all suitably supported in the um, in the efforts to switch from uh, fossil fuels to renewables and to switch Scotland's economies from these, shall we say, more outdated and um, polluting industries to clean, green, new technologies. Now, one of the things which is important here is to reassure people who work in the uh, oil industry in the northeast of Scotland and in other parts of Scotland as well that um, this switchover from the existing oil and gas industry in the North Sea, the offshore industry as we sometimes call it, to these greener and new technologies is not going to result in mass redundancies and in fact it's going to open new opportunities not only uh, for the former employees of these industries but also for those industries themselves. For example, oil companies um, at the moment are actually now beginning to engage in developing new green technologies and actually investing in them and this is what um, the, the SNP government is wanting to encourage. Now one of the reasons for doing this is, uh, well I suppose it's twofold. One is first of all to make sure that this so-called just transition actually takes place um, with all the correct support in place but also I think it's to reassure the industries themselves such as the oil industry, the big oil energy giants that they have a future in this economy too and it's not necessarily with oil but it's with other industries which they can also invest in. Now I know from having worked uh, in technology and in manufacturing since the early 1980s, in fact even before that, that in Scotland until now it's been extremely difficult to fund any new technological startups. Um, Angel investors sometimes come in to do this, but the sums of money involved with individual investors are very, very low. However, um, venture capitalists, the kind of uh, organizations and groups that you can put a lot of money into developing new technologies, are always looking for a very quick payout. They're looking for you know making a profit within five years, something like that. So they're looking for a very quick return, and that is often not easy to do with a new tech startup. So the aim of the SNP's new uh, initiative, announced by Ian Blackford MP in the last 24 hours, is to do a lot of different things to help join this entire process up. Now, one of the things that's key here uh, is Scotland's universities and higher education colleges, further education colleges, and supporting those um, institutions in setting up shall we say commercialization offshoots, little startup companies to develop the types of technology which are produced by their research into green or new technologies, low carbon technologies. And at the moment the the levels of investment and the support for such efforts is relatively hit and miss. It's a bit sporadic. And the idea is to produce a new government agency whose entire job it is to support those universities, those colleges, and these new startups, these new uh, entrepreneurs. So there is that. There's also the idea of linking um, Scotland's uh, further education colleges, what we used to call vocational training. Um, these would be more practical courses such as engineering, uh, electrical engineering, vehicle mechanics, things like that. Now those colleges also play a role here because the people that they train are the actual folk that actually tighten the nuts and bolts who connect the electrical supply, fit the motors and so on to these types of devices. So it's necessary for all of these educational institutions to be linked together in this one network alongside uh, the commercial support which is required for the startups for these new, um, what should we say, these, these new industries, these nascent new technologies being developed. It's very hard to take any new uh, technology product, whether it's electronic, software, or whether it's actually what we would call metal bending or hard engineering where we're building big machines such as tied turbines. 
It's very hard to get investment to take it from proof of concept, it's usually one small scale working prototype, and scaling that up to industrial production levels and actually investing in factories to build such things and developing those markets. All of that requires support and that's what's missing in Scotland's industrial strategy. One of the reasons also for developing this uh, new joined up approach in this new agency I feel is it's, it's also political in a way because if people uh, are to be asked to support independence they need to know that these new industries, uh, this promised expansion uh, and growth of this new green economy has something underpinning it. And by something underpinning it, I'm talking about actual government money being sunk into developing some of these ideas, some of these technologies into viable commercial products and then helping those businesses to grow and expand and to build factories and to employ people and to draw some of the experienced individuals from, shall we say, the declining oil and gas industries of the North Sea and into these new industries. It will also, I think, from a political viewpoint, soften the blow when it comes to the big oil corporations who've been very resistant, obviously, <laughs> uh, to changes which threaten their uh, monopoly on these different forms of energy and these different technologies. But as they begin to see that the government is supporting this and that these industries are actually beginning to develop, then the big investment which is necessary to rapidly expand these at scale and produce factories producing valuable export goods and technology which can be exported to other places, that's when it will happen. <laughs> so from a political angle, this also plays very well for independence because Companies which are, I would say traditionally have resisted the political temptation of independence have done so because of the risks that they perceive in doing so. They have stuck with the devil they know, i.e. the British government and its attitude, its hands-off attitude to the energy industry, basically allowing everything to be in private hands. They probably fear the fact that Scotland might create its own um, energy agency over which it will be able to control the cost of domestic energy. However, there are ways in which any energy company, whether it's oil, gas or electrical power, can be induced uh, to take part in this, but not only take part in it, but also thrive because they've done so. So this is a very, very clever uh, and very useful and timely move by the SNP to build support for independence and for this green switchover from the very industries which you might expect have been threatened by it. And I think it can only be a good thing. And it's the beginnings of something which I hope will roll out across many industries, not just these green technologies with energy, but green technologies for transport, green technologies for food production for everything, for domestic heating, you name it. There are so many aspects of our lives which need to be green, which need to stop producing carbon dioxide, stop using methane, stop producing noxious gases and soot. All of this is good news. Now at the same time, another paradigm shift is going to have to happen in the next few months because Eventually, and later I think this summer, we'll see a big change in the political realities of sovereignty in Scotland. I've talked many times about the sovereignty of the people of Scotland being the supreme, if you like, seat of power in Scotland. We, the people of Scotland, actually are the community of the realm. We are the crown of Scotland. The crown of Scotland is vested in the community of the realm, which is the old terminology basically for everyone who lives here. And despite the fact that uh, politicians have hitherto, and I'm not just talking about unionist and English and British MPs and politicians from those parties, I'm talking about politicians from the SNP, politicians from ALBA, and maybe even politicians from the Green Party, have all assumed up until now that Westminster actually has sovereignty here in Scotland. Now I've told you on numerous occasions that this is not true, and still is not true. The difficulty that the politicians have is that they have this very fixed mindset. They are used to dealing with the United Kingdom 
being in charge of Scotland. And it's been assumed because that's what we've been told by the British establishment, that they have full control over Scotland, that they have the sovereignty um, to exploit our natural resources and all the rest of it. But from a legal standpoint, even though these politicians might regard um, our historical um, constitutional documents, such as the Claim of Right Act, the Declaration of Our Broth, Union of the Crowns, all of these things which f actually guarantee the sovereignty of the people. Although these politicians may regard these as mouldy old pieces of history, it's worth remembering that the entire Westminster system is based on mouldy old history. All of Westminster's stupid traditions and its really crazy systems of doing things are all based on mouldy old history. And yet that is the accepted reality of politics at Westminster. All of which derives from mouldy old history and they don't even have a written constitution like we do. So it's going to take us, and I'm talking about you and I here, the people of this country, quite a long time to convince our own politicians, our own pro-independence politicians, that we actually do have this authority. And because we do have this authority, it is not Westminster that is the boss of these politicians in Edinburgh, or these politicians in Edinburgh representing Scotland. It's actually us, the people who voted for them. And because our constitution is written, and it's still in existence, even if you might claim it's mouldy old history, it's still legally there. It has not been abolished, it has not been repealed, and that sovereignty is still intact and may, and of course should, still be used to gain independence. It will take time though, because even the most fervent um, independence campaigning SNP, MPs or MSPs are still suffering from this delusion that Westminster has sovereignty here. It has never had sovereignty here. Even after the Treaty of the Union was signed, it still didn't have sovereignty and it continued not to have sovereignty for the last 300 and nearly 17 years. So on the anniversary of the 317th year since the signing of the least popular treaty in the history of Scotland, the one which nobody else voted for in the entire country except a number of heavily bribed and coerced officials who were negotiating the deal. On that anniversary this year, things will be changing. The paradigm shift from Westminster sovereignty to popular sovereignty will happen this year. And it's going to happen a lot sooner than you think. And it's going to be difficult for even our own politicians to get their heads around the fact that things have actually changed and that what they've been told and led to believe by Westminster, in some cases many of these um, politicians are MPs who sit at Westminster and have become used to Westminster sovereignty and their way of doing things, it's very much more difficult for us to change their mindset than it is for us to change our own. Because they, these politicians, are the ones who are steeped in all of this mouldy old history of Westminster and think that this is a fact, even though the English state doesn't have a written constitution guaranteeing anything at all, sovereignty or otherwise, it's just assumed. But we don't need to assume our um, popular sovereignty, we have documents that prove it. And when you have legal documentation, well, you can take that to the bank, can't you? So things are about to change, and the SNP is making all the right moves now with regards to the new green economy linking up the innovations coming from universities and colleges with new startups, with larger industry and with bigger investment to come into that and supporting all that all the way through is excellent news and will bolster support for independence if that is the prize at the other end of the process. In the meantime, the process needs to change and that means the people of Scotland will become and will realise, actually not that they'll become, they already are, but they will realise that they are sovereign and once people start to organise themselves into a very large organisation which is bigger than all of these independence parties, then I think we will be able to make sure that our politicians start doing what they're meant to be doing, which is organising a 
lawful Scottish referendum using the powers which they already have, which we are basically giving them through our own sovereign authority, the right to hold the referendum in our own country, despite anything that is said by the English state, which doesn't have a constitution, and whose own Supreme Court is barely 13 years old and has no authority here. So, you get what I'm saying to you here. The reality of the situation is not what our politicians have been led to believe, nor is it what we, of the population of Scotland, have been led to believe for the last 317 years. But the the period of being asleep for 317 years is sort of reminiscent of Sleeping Beauty, but at the end of this, we're all going to wake up and realise that the reality that we thought was true is nonsense. It was based on lies, omissions, and basically us being distracted away from the fact that we still have our sovereignty, to the point where after the generations have regenerated several hundred times, people have actually forgotten all about it. But not everybody's forgotten all about it. And this is where Salvo comes in. Salvo is the organization responsible for discovering the real truth of our sovereignty. <clears throat> and that is going to become very apparent very, very soon. Anyway, I will see you soon. Have a great weekend. Hopefully, I will see you again on Sunday. Please uh, keep, if you can, keep donating to my party driver appeal. I need all of the uh, all of the funding I can get at the moment to keep producing these programs at a reasonable rate. It's, um, it's quite a tall order bringing the program together as you can appreciate, so anything that you can give to the appeal is going to be definitely used and thank you all for your support over, what is it, nine or more years now that I've been doing these shows. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye bye for now.